I just sold this house that I designed myself for $810,000, giving me a profit of over $200,000. The scroll stopping design hacks that I used helped me go under contract in eight days in a place where average days on market was over 90 days. So how did a schlub like me, an engineer with no talent design, flew his own drone into his own face while filming this intro, causing a bloody mess, and I mean literally a bloody mess, make hundreds of thousands of dollars over and over with literally no money in the deal? And how can you do the same? Well, let's slow down and take it from the top. So I was sitting at home one day watching Forrest Gump or SpongeBob or something like that, and I got a call. It was my realtor. And this is a phone call that would change my life forever. We got an offer on Mariposa, which is a house that I was selling with Rob. I said, how much? He said, $670,000. And I did a quick calculation. That would leave us with a profit of over $300,000. $300,000. That would leave us with a profit of over $300,000, which at the time was more money than I'd ever seen. See, two years prior to that, I was broke. And I'd scratched and scratched and saved as much money as I could and used the power of leverage and real estate to design and build this house. And using a construction loan, we had all the money out. So this was all gravy. But there was one big question, which is, what are we gonna do with the money? What are we gonna do with the money? And cut to today, I've done a lot of stuff with that money. And although I've done flips and buy and hold and design and hold, what I'm gonna to talk to you about today is what I've turned into a six-figure side income, which is designing and building and selling Airbnbs. And full disclosure, I was actually filming this intro on site in Joshua Tree, which was going great until I flew my own drone into my face. Now, unfortunately, the drone was facing the house, not me, but you can see a little clip of me getting hit by the drone, falling in right here, it was a bloody, bloody mess. I'm super lucky to have my vision right now because I have my glasses on. So we're gonna film the rest of this from the safety of the studio. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you about how I got started designing a building and all the secrets that make it successful and how you can do it too. I'm gonna teach you about my design tricks and all that other stuff. And stay till the end because I'm gonna talk about the upcoming recession, how that changes things and how you can kind of shore up yourself to make sure you're protected. And if you do like what you see today, I do coaching and consulting. You can see my website at johnnymartinez.com and you can reach out to me there and we can set up a coaching call. But first, let me take you on site to my latest build. Real estate is a big complicated game. It's like a mix of monopoly and chess and risk all put together. And being successful, building your own life, building wealth is all about finding your niche. There's a lot of different ways to play the game. And the only thing you can do is jump in. The thing about Airbnb and short-term rentals is that they've really changed the game and opened up a whole new world of real estate and ways to make money. It's like a big expansion pack to the video game of real estate. And knowing about it and getting good at it is the key to being successful. There's specific hacks that you can do to make money. And I'm gonna tell you about what I've done and what I know about it. And will help you be successful. And just like cooking, you're gonna find your own stew that you're gonna make. It's gonna taste a little bit different than mine because everybody has their own style and own flavors. But there's a lot of niches in real estate. And to leave your nine to five job, if that's where you're at, you just need to find one. So jumping forward to present day, I just sold this house, the Joshua Retreat, for over $800,000. We walked home with a profit of over $200,000. Now, six months ago, when the market was white hot, it actually would have been a profit of over $400,000, which makes your stomach turn until you realize that it could have been a negative profit. So I'll take what I can get. And that profit's after all commissions and all the BS California taxes and whatnot. And that was a total time about 18 months. And I have absolutely no background in design. I have no innate ability or talent for it. It's just something that I realized you can figure out. I was an engineer for most of my life, and then I just surrounded myself with people smarter than me and realized anybody can do this. I started off using my own borrowing power, that's what I could bring to the table, and then eventually I partnered up with other people, and then after that, I found investors, and in the process, made hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars doing so. Real estate's a lot like poker, except for if you play your cards right, you have a big advantage. It can change at a moment's notice. On any given hand, you could be dealt aces and you could lose, or you can be dealt dog and take home a bunch of money. But in the long run, if you make consistent good bets, you'll make money. And while leveraging the bank's money, you'll become wealthy. So I'm gonna take you back to the first time I played the game when I only had one chip and it paid off big time. So if you watch my other video, you know that in 2019 I was an engineer and I had trouble saving money. I ended up having two remote jobs and that's how I built a stack of over $175,000. And at the time I was doing improv and I met my first business partner, Robert. And we could have done anything. We could have built a glamp site, we could have done a flip, we could have done a burr, which is where you buy a place, remodel it, rent it out, refinance it, and then repeat that process. At that time, it was a lot different than it is now. You have to make different decisions based on what's going on at the time. So we looked at everything and we said, hey, let's go ahead and just design and build a house from scratch and we chose Joshua Tree. The reason we did so is because land was cheap. To let you know how Joshua Tree is, because there's so much land out there, there's no infrastructure for all the people that go to the national park. It's kind of an anomaly. So we bought land for like $18,000 cash, 
And then we went ahead and started designing this house. Now the key is at the time, I had nothing to bring to the table but borrowing power. But I need to figure out at that time what I bring to the table. What do I bring to the table? It's kind of like a board game. Before you've gotten into real estate, you can read about it. But until you do it, that's how we learn. We learn by doing. I had read the rule book to real estate, but until you get in and play it, you don't really know the right strategy. So what I brought to the table was borrowing power. I could offer somebody smarter than me a bunch of equity in a house. And in return, I would learn how to do all this stuff. I had borrowing power that was just sitting there. Surround yourself with people smarter than you and figure out what you bring to the table. I can offer them something. I can offer them equity in a house that they'll just have to use some of their bandwidth to help design. And I'm gonna use this potential energy, which is my borrowing power from the bank. And that was a good partnership. I did construction for several years. I built houses, so I know how that worked. But it was the psychology of design and everything I had to learn. All the little tips and hacks that you need to hack the algorithm of Airbnb and hack the algorithm of investors looking to buy later on if you're gonna sell. So I gave up 50% of my equity. I gave up some future gains to learn. So Rob and I got started building what would become Casa Mariposa. It would be written up in Dwell Magazine. It was an insane ride. But what I didn't know at the time was this decision was gonna change my life forever. Soon I would no longer have to be an engineer. I wouldn't have to slave away in an office being miserable. That decision in the beginning to take that leap it's what allowed me to do things like fly my own plane to the Bahamas or New York or take long trips to the Caribbean or Vietnam or whatever I'm doing or work on personal projects. These changes are what spurs innovation. So before we go any further, why don't I go ahead and explain why we chose to do a new build and why we utilized a construction loan. So a lot of banks, like the ones I have relationships with, they do construction loans where they lend a certain percentage based on the appraised value. Now, you have a certain cost to build and then you have an appraised value. And hopefully, if you do things right, that appraised value is much higher than the cost to build. So if things appraise high enough, you can theoretically get all your money out at the end of the build. And if you buy land, they will use that as part of the down payment. That's the power of a new build construction loan. And in this case, that's exactly what happened. So in Joshua Tree, land was cheap. And there's other places around the country, like Hot Springs, Arkansas, or other places where land is cheap because there's a lot of it, but there's not enough supply. So that's something that we were taking advantage of. And so if we bought outright, we would have had to have a down payment of at least 10%, plus we would have had to rehab it. So we got started and we said, let's build something unique and special. This takes me to another point, which is Airbnb is a game of scroll stopping. Just like when you go on Instagram or any other social media that has scrolling, the algorithm is trying to show you stuff that's gonna get you to stop scrolling. And when you're booking an Airbnb, you're scrolling down and your eye is gonna catch certain things. And knowing that ahead of time, you can start to hack these things and give people what they want. Remember, short-term rentals have opened up a whole new world here. And now you can do things like a bocce ball court that doesn't cost that much money, but is really, really cool. You can use colors and textures in the right places. You can use views coming out of windows. You can use framing like you would with photography. This all matters more than it used to. And keeping this in mind allows you to sell for a much higher price. Remember, real estate, like any other market, is a lot about psychology. <laughs> so we got our appraisal back, which was the limiter on how much we can borrow. And it came in high, so we were good. We could pull all of our money back and we were off to the races. So after that, we began the painstaking build process. And as I went on, I started learning and realizing things. You're exposed to all of this. And I was surprised at the design process. I thought design was something that you were born with. I didn't realize it's something that you work at and anybody can do. And luckily now we have the internet. So we have examples from the world's best designers and we can pick and choose stuff and adapt it for our own thing. But the whole time we made unique creative decisions that was gonna help with scroll stopping. Remember, you're in competition with others for going viral. I learned that shapes and colors and textures and uniqueness and coziness and experiences and all that stuff is important. You wanna give people a sense of FOMO if they don't book your place. Write that down. That's the whole Airbnb masterclass right there. So we ended up going super premium. We actually ran out of money on this build. Rob and I had to go in there and do the wallpaper ourselves. I built these shelves, great dating profile picture. We got the whole place set up. We filled in the cracks where we needed to. So we put it on Airbnb. It did amazing. We were making equivalent, I think a hundred and something thousand dollars a year. And now we're back at the point from the beginning of the video where my realtor called us. He said, we got an offer for 670,000 on the house. We took him a profit of over $300,000 and we did what's called a 1031 exchange. If you're not familiar with that, it's a way to delay the capital gains taxes, which can be really high, especially if you're operating in California. They can be as high as like 40%. And we put all that money into other stuff. And I'm going to do a separate video about everything we did and that whole process of the 1031 exchange. We had 47 acres in Virginia. We bought three houses in West Virginia, bought another plot in Joshua Tree to build another sick house, which we're doing. And we also kept some money for ourselves. It was life-changing because it led me to all the other stuff that I've done today. So it goes down to, you need to make a decision. Do you want to sell? Do you want to keep and refinance? 
What do you wanna do? So one of the big things about this, and this is something to think about, is this sale was a record in the area for price per square foot at the time. And investors came in at that point, and I started working with them and repeating the process in different ways and in different places. So at that point, I realized I had the knowledge to build a house that would be above and beyond almost any house in any market. And that's a really big skill to have. By understanding the market and designing to that, and giving people special and unique experiences that they're gonna remember forever. So at this point, my life was completely changed. I went from just having borrowing power and a down payment to having the knowledge to make other people money. And that's what I did. And investors came and I started designing and building other houses and adding value to places where maybe people don't realize how much value there is to add because they don't understand how things have changed. So one of these houses that I've built and designed is the Joshua Retreat. And one of the reasons I wanna talk about this house is as of a couple days ago, I just closed on the sale of $810,000, which is $10,000 over asking. Joshua Tree right now, the average time on market is over 90 days, I believe. And even in that market, we went under contract in nine days. And real quick, one of the things I did was I took the Mariposa house, I made a slanted roof, I made it over 1,000 square feet and popped out an extra bedroom on the side because that's a kind of inexpensive way to make it a three bedroom, two bath as opposed to a two, two. So that alone was gonna make it more valuable, but for not much more building cost. Something that you learn in the game of real estate is that there's constant tug of war between doing what is classically amazing design and doing what looks good on Airbnb, what stops people from scrolling and what books. So people wanna imagine themselves snuggling up, watching Netflix. So you wanna kind of design for unique experiences. A good starting point for you is go through a market, any market, and zoom in and click on a bunch of different places and see what's booking and see what's working. And you'll start to get an intuition on it. And in real estate, you don't wanna just sell all the time because you build wealth over time by having people pay your mortgage. You get the appreciation by using leverage. If you have a 10% down second home loan, then 90% of your appreciation is actually coming for free. But you're kind of birthing these house children and then putting them up for adoption and it's tough. But this is a vehicle for freedom for a lot of people. And in my case, it's just a side business that I have going. I built a couple of chips up and was able to allocate that to that own business while also doing other stuff, buying and holding. And if you surround yourself with people better than you, you're gonna learn from them and you'll find that you, have it's kind of like learning a language with immersion versus learning it in school. If you actually just go to Spain for three months, you're probably gonna learn Spanish faster than if you took five years of Spanish in school. So that brings me to present day. And I have all kinds of projects going on and my life is completely different than it was at the beginning of this video. Even though we had an Airbnb that was running and making a bunch of money, we sold that house and we were able to parlay that into all kinds of different projects. And then I was able to work on my own projects and then I was able to bring in investors and work on projects with them, which I still do. But unless you've been living under a rock, you know that the market is not what it was. And by all accounts, we're headed towards a recession. There's a lot of stuff going on. We have war, economic uncertainty, inflation, killer bees. I don't know if that's real. We, had, we don't have enough bees. We have climate change. We can't find genes that fit good. There's a lot of factors in play. So don't focus on just one. And no two recessions are the same. A lot of times they line up similarly and you can compare them that way. But this one's kind of unique. We have low unemployment, which is strange. We do have a housing shortage. In recessions, people that were gonna go to Disneyland and fly to Europe, they're gonna maybe go on a road trip. And if you're looking at national parks and you look at the history and the number of visitors, you can look at that online, you'll see that you won't be able to find recessions in there because they don't dip that much. But the average recession lasts about 18 months and some could say we're already in one, some could say it's not gonna start until you wake up and you get the news that the markets have had record day drops and the bottom's falling out. With real estate, if you do it right, you're making a great bet. The odds are in your favor, but it doesn't mean you're gonna win every time. So you wanna give yourself exit strategies and this is the most important thing. Are you giving yourself a chance to sell? Are you giving yourself a chance to Airbnb and pay the mortgage? Are you giving yourself a chance to medium term rent and pay most of the mortgage and cover the rest yourself until inflation and the market has recovered? Because remember 10 years from now, that mortgage payment is gonna be a lot, lot less when it comes to inflation. So there's a lot of things in consideration. If you give yourself exit strategies, you're just shorting yourself up and making yourself more protected. And if you're designing something special, you give yourself the best chance to win. But just remember, if you make consistent, good bets, you're gonna win in the end. And find your niche. I mean, it's great to make some cash, you know what I'm saying? All right. All right.